Dear brothers, please uh, allow me to begin by thanking you, thanking you for your faithful witness so evident here today. And what a blessed morning it has been to be inspired by both of our speakers. And I know that you so much desire to accept their challenges and to live faithfully as they asked us to do. And yet we know that desire is not enough. We can only do so with the strength that God supplies. So how blessed we are here today around this altar to be enlightened by the Lord's words and to be strengthened with his holy body and blood. We must celebrate and rejoice. They are the words found at the closing of the gospel parable today of the prodigal son. And dear men, we do celebrate and we do rejoice when we are recipients of God's mercy, when we are instruments of God's mercy. We need to be recipients of God's mercy because I'm sure most of us can identify with the younger son in the gospel parable. The one who misused his blessings, distanced himself from his father and his family. For we too, like him, sometimes can take our, our blessings for granted and maybe even abuse them. Perhaps sometimes, like him, we can allow the things of this world to consume us, that we forget who and what truly matter. And perhaps, like that younger son, there are times that we are so focused on what we think we deserve, we forget about what others need. And when we acknowledge our failures, our weaknesses, we cannot be distraught. We cannot stay down. Now, I bet some of you are thinking, how long will it be in his homily today before he mentions his NFL home team, the Philadelphia Eagles? <laughs> well, actually, now is a good point. I don't know if you saw this YouTube video or not, but it's a really powerful one for your sons and daughters and grandchildren to see and listen to, and really for all of us. It's a, a video by the Super Bowl MVP, uh, Nick Foles, talking about failure. He talks about the, the failure of his career and in life, and he said that he learned to acknowledge failure, to embrace it. And he realized that failure can help to build character and to make us stronger than ever before. In our holy faith, we call that conversion. We acknowledge our sins and our failures, and with God's grace, we seek to begin anew. And as today's gospel proclaims, whenever we do so, God runs to us to embrace us in love and mercy. And so, dear brothers, at this time in your life, if there is any failure or sin weighing heavenly on your heart, to know that God stands ready to forgive you, to heal you, and to bring you newness of life. Wasn't that the message of the prophet Micah in our first reading? That God will cast our sins into the depths of the sea. It's true. Though our sins may be like scarlet, they can become as white as snow because no sin or failure are ever greater 
than God's mercy. It was encouraging to see so many of you today celebrating that great gift of God's mercy in the sacrament of penance. And I encourage all of you to do so in this very sacred season of Lent. In thanksgiving for that gift of God's mercy because we don't deserve it, it's God's gift. He simply asks that we be instruments of mercy. Maybe at this time in your life, there is a relationship in need of healing. Maybe with a family member or friend or co-worker or even a so-called enemy. And the Lord is asking you to be the one who runs to that person to initiate the pardon and the forgiveness. We know it's not always easy to do so, especially if we've been hurt or betrayed. But God would never ask us to do it if it was not possible. And it is with his grace. Pray for that help. Pray fervently to ask the Lord to let go of any anger or bitterness or grudge in your heart so that you can imitate his compassion and forgiveness. And dear brothers, there's one other way I'd like you to consider about being an instrument of God's mercy. Isn't it sad when you hear a young person or any person say, I just feel lost. I'm just lost in life. And yet we know that there are many people who are right within our families, our workplaces and schools and communities. And if you look each and every day, you'll see them. And that's the person to whom God is sending you. God is asking you to run to them, to assure them that only in Christ will we find the way, and that he and his church are always there to welcome them and embrace them. Never underestimate how your heartfelt words, your faithful example, and sincere goodness can help someone to find the way back home. The reason for joy at the end of the gospel parable was because there was a brother who was dead and found life. He was lost and was found. And dear brothers in Christ, as recipients and as instruments of God's mercy, we too will find every reason to celebrate and to rejoice. Amen.